This is Revival in Reformation Television. Keep watching. Welcome to Youth in National Revival with Dr. K. Be prepared to receive a prophetic word that would reposition you for kingdom exploit with transgenerational impact. On your mark, get set, grow. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Youth in National Revival. And as usual, I'm your host, Olukade Oedekbo, and it promises to be another great time in God's presence. Today, um, we're continuing our conversation, the love of God, the love of God. And last week, we were talking about, um, you know, how God is our father, you know, and how there is a father's love or a kind of parental love that he has towards us that we need to understand, you know, because if we do not understand it, we would not be able to work it. But that's part of a larger piece. You know, last week I was talking about the fact that God is not a unidimensional God. God is a multidimensional God. He's not a cartoon God. He's a complex person. And to just relate to him in one dimension is to, is to not really want to know God. Is to create a God in our own image. But if we seek to know the God of the Bible, we can't know him on, on our terms. We have to look at all the ways, all the pictures that he's painted to us about his love. How that he's introduced himself to us as our father, as our husband, as our friend, and as our king. To only relate with him as a father and not as a king is a misnomer. To only relate with him as a king, but not as a friend, is a misnomer. To only relate with him as a friend, but not as a husband, as a groom, as a lover, is also a misnomer. So we need to understand these different dimensions of God and walk in them. And last week, we started talking about dealing with God as a father. And I said, essentially, there are three components of the father's love that we need to understand. Now, number one, in the father's love, there is absolute safety. Absolute safety. You know, in that love, you can be rest assured that nobody is going to judge you. In the world, people can judge you. Your friends can judge you. You know, um, colleagues can judge you. But you know, your, your mother, you know, most times, human mothers, human parents, most times they, they love you. They, they don't judge you the way outsiders do. But even if they judge you, they are not a perfect representation of the Heavenly Father. The way your Heavenly Father loves you is that you can find absolute security in Him, irrespective of your weaknesses, irrespective of your shortcomings. In fact, the more broken we are, the more He tends to relate with us emotionally. He's, most, he's, he's committed to us emotionally. And your tears move God, you know, actually. Your pains move God. But sometimes he allows you to go through them because they are for your good. So today we want to talk about the next component of the fatherhood of God that every Christian must understand. And it's his compassionate anger. His compassionate anger or call it compassionate discipline. You know, many of us think of God as a father who cannot discipline us, who does not hurt us. You know, some people will say, tell you that if it is not good, then it is not God. If it is evil, then it's from the devil. You hear things like that. But many times we don't even know what good is. Because in our, in our, we judge good in our limited human knowledge. You know, we judge what is good by our own um, experiences or by our culture. For example, I tell people, I say that if I cutting off a five-year-old girl's leg, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Of course, almost all, all the time, many people will say, oh, that's a bad thing. Why would you want to cut off a girl's leg or a child's leg or even an, anybody's leg for that matter? But I remember when I've been in the theater and the only choice we have in trying to save a, 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 a I remember this particular five-year-old, um, I think she was about five year, northern girl, very beautiful, sharp girl. But she had an injury in the leg that the parents did not manage very well until the neck, you know, the, 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 the leg started um, 
um, um, experiencing some form of necrosis and all that. And the only intervention we could give at that time was to cut off the leg. Now, if you saw me cutting that leg, and we use the same thing anybody would use to cut. We were using a saw, a sharp saw, and we're drilling and cutting off the, of course, this time under anesthesia. But whether it was under anesthesia or not, if you just saw me randomly, you know, cutting off somebody's leg, you probably think I'm committing evil. But in that particular case, I was trying to save the child. So not every form of what we so-call evil is destructive. Sometimes it's compassionate. And if you do not know God as somebody who gives out compassionate discipline, compassionate hunger, then you will miss God totally. You will be dealing with a God in your own image and not the God of the Bible because the God of the Bible is a compassionate disciplinarian, putting it that way. Look at it. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5. Let's start from verse 5. He says, have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? He says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? Now, some people have said the only means through which God disciplines is through the word of God, that he disciplines you by correcting you. Okay, that's true. It's the major way. But he also disciplines through hardship. Look at verse 7. It says, endure hardship. This is not, these are not words, right? This is a situation. This was something they were experiencing. He says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a while, while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. And you see that. So we, we're going through discipline, but it's for our good. We're going through pain, hardship, but it's for our good. It is working in us a far wealthier, you know, glory. That's what is working out in us. You see, God's anger is not a payback anger. It's not retributive. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not like human anger. You know, you know, healthy parents, sometimes they, they, they have payback anger. Your parents want you to do something you don't do. You can see that they are trying to manipulate you into doing that thing by maybe not talking to you. Or sometimes it's just pure payback for being disrespectful to them. You know, sometimes human parental anger, human parental anger can be poisonous. It can be poisonous. It can be, it can be bitter. And you're like, ah, mommy, daddy, what, what? You, but you can perceive it, number one. Why? Because they are falling beings. And somehow that's how they deal. They deal with maybe when somebody does something for them, they take their pound of flesh. But God is not like that. God's anger is slow, is under its control, and is temporary. God's discipline is slow, is under its control, and it's temporary. It's a compassion-driven hunger. It's a compassion-driven discipline. It's a compassion-driven dis discipline. You know, some people say, oh, wow, well, well, he's God. If he's loving, why should he be disciplining us? Why should he be taking us? Any father, I just read it to you, any parent who does not discipline, does not truly love that child. It's a sign of illegitimacy. It means we are bastards. If, if we are truly children of God, we must accept his discipline, his, his discipline or disciplinary actions. We must accept it. We must enjoy it. I remember when I was in the university, eh, sorry, when I was in secondary school, there was this school father of mine. Yeah, there was this school father of mine who, who you know, really liked me and um, 
you know, he preached to me. I accepted Christ, you know, maybe not really, but I, 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 sh- I enjoyed the moment. And he would always have me in his room. He was a prefect. He would give me food and all of that. But there was one day he, he discovered that I'd gone back to my bad friends and we started sneaking out of school again and doing all the bad things I told him I'd stopped. And he invited me into his, into his room. You know, he had like a room there. And you know, he, he actually flogged me for the first time. And I could see tears in his eyes. I was crying. He also was, was, I could see tears well up in his eyes because he wasn't beating me because he just wanted to be a wicked senior. He was beating me because he was, he had that compassion on me. Like I'd broken that love and he needed to straighten me out. That's what happens when God disciplines us. You see, when God does not discipline us, he shows that he doesn't love us. But you know what? It's too late. God loves us. The proof of that is his son. He has given his son, his only begotten son, to die for our sins on the cross of Calvary. It's too late for anybody to convince us that God doesn't love us. Except if you are truly not born again, if you have not received the love of God in Christ Jesus. You see, there are two kinds of parents that can make orphans out of their children. When I mean orphan, I'm, I'm not saying that they are dead, but that can, you know, actually alienate their children and cause evil to them and cause harm to them. Now, it's the number, the number one parents or the first group of parents are those parents who never discipline their children. They are completely passive. They are detached. They never get angry at their children. There's nothing they would do. It's always pampering them. They are completely detached. The other parents are the parents that are aggressive. They are abusive. Lots of hunger, lots of confrontation, payback hunger. Both the neglecting and the abusive parents destroy the child. But you see, God is neither of them. God is not neglecting and God is not abusive. God is at the center. God is a compassionate disciplinarian. He's a compassionate disciplinarian. He will, he's going to discipline us. And we must endure the hardship. You know, he H. Gifford writes, and I, and I quote, he says, the more a father loves his son, the more he hates in his son a drunk or a drunkard. The more he hates in his son a liar. The more he hates in his son a traitor. If God were not angry over how we are destroying ourselves, he wouldn't be good and loving. If God allows you and gives you over to you. You see, in, 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 in Romans chapter 1, he tells us how, how that because they refused to retain him in their knowledge, he gave them over to a reprobate mind. You see, that's what happens to people who have rejected God. To nations who have rejected God. To nations who do not want God. He keeps them over to their lust, to their desires. And you know what that does to them? It kills them. It destroys them. But we that we are children of God, He disciplines us. He takes us through hardship. He takes us through situations that can knock our senses back home because He is a good and loving Father and will not give, of, give us over to ourselves because in ourselves and of ourselves, we would destroy ourselves. I know some of us are finding very uncomfortable to say God is hungry. You know, some of you are, some, I, I remember there's a book, um, if I can remember now, that says um, the sin- sinners in the, in the hands of a hungry God. You know, some of us cannot say God is hungry because we think that God cannot be hungry. You know, I was, I was watching an interview in an interview of, of um, this um, Hollywood actor, Kino Reeves. And um, the interviewer was saying, um, is he a lover or is he a fighter? And he says, look, I'm both. I'm a lover and a fighter. And the woman said, no, you can't be a lover and be a fighter. And Kino Reeves looks at her and says, what kind of love is that if you cannot fight for your love? Because loving is not the opposite of fighting. 
Loving is not the opposite of hunger. Hate is the opposite of love. Anger is a neutral emotion. Anger is a neutral emotion. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. It can be compassionate and it can be destructive. But in God, what we find is a compassionate anger, not a destructive anger. So God is angry. God can be angry. But it's not an anger that destroys. It's an anger that saves. It's an anger that disciplines. So God is angry at the sinner. He's angry at the drunk in him, at the liar in him, at the traitor in him, at the fornicator in him, at the adulterer in him. And he would, he would allow him or her to go through some hardship so that his senses can come home like the prodigal son. The prodigal son went through hardship. And then he asks, he says, hey, this pain is too much. I'd rather go home to my father. But imagine if the father was secretly sending materials to him and he didn't know. He would just think that what is, is in a good state and, and life is beautiful. And so sometimes God withdraws some of those things so that we can endure the hardship and our senses can come back home. Right. We need the pain of discipline to avoid the pain of destruction. Tim Keller said that. We need the pain of discipline to avoid the pain of destruction. There is nothing that is unchristian about God disciplining us. There is nothing that is unchristian about us going through some hard situation, some painful situation. We need the pain of discipline so that we can avoid the pain of destruction. We are serving a God who can be compassionately angry with us. But his anger is only for a while. He says, look, we're dust. He's not going to be angry with us forever. He can't keep, he can't sustain. So his, his anger is redemptive. It's not destructive. He wants to always bring us back to that place of fellowship with him and to that place of good and perfect and complete spiritual health so that we can continue to radiate his glory. I believe you've learned one or two things again in this episode. God bless you. We're, talk we're still talking about the love of the Father. The next week we're going to be talking about um, absolute home. And then we'll cross over into loving God as a lover. God bless you. So then continue to watch Revival and Reformation TV. There's a lot that God has in store for you. And I know that you don't want to miss them. God bless you. And I'll see you some other time. Bye. This is Revival in Reformation Television. Keep watching.